Good morning and many blessings, ladies and gentlemen. Just want to go ahead and let you know it is the that time of the week again for Reiku's Sunday Detox. I hope you guys have been preserving your energy and protecting your energy by, you know, doing the, the regular, sitting here, staying hydrated, especially with the epidemic on our hands. I hope you are practicing good hygiene, washing your hands, not touching your face, because you guess what? Breathing in the air is not going to protect you, and it's more or less touching surfaces and washing your hands and practicing proper hygiene, ladies and gentlemen. But that's not the matter of what we're here today. Today, we're going to be talking about energy and thoughts, thoughts. What if I was to tell you that the thoughts that you have when you first wake up in the morning dictates your type of energy you are to have that whole entire day so if you wake up in the mindset and the energy headset thinking oh today's gonna suck guess what you basically already dictate what the energy is going to be and what your mood's going to be for the whole day when you wake up in the morning you have to end up thinking in a positive light because most people don't realize when you sit here and you wake up and your first thought in your head is negative you are just basically pulling in negative energy your whole mindset is going to be based off of what you do. You have to think everything that you do in life is energy. Your movement, your breathing. It takes energy to breathe. It takes energy to breathe in and breathe out. So if you take a deep breath with me, you... That just took energy. So your thoughts are also energy. And remember what I told you, energy cannot be destroyed. It can just transferred. So when you actually wake up in the morning, your first thought process is, I don't want to get up, it's Monday. You see how that already sounds negative? So the energy you just put out, you're asking for basically to replace that negative thought, that energy. So instead of replacing it and expecting the energy that's going to come to you the rest of the day, that is going to influence you for the rest of the day to come in and be negative you want to think on a good light so what you want to go ahead and do is if you sit here and you start your day on a negative light you got to know everything that comes your way is going to be negative When you sit here and wonder, why do these things keep happening to me? Why? Why, why, why? And then you sit here and you contradict that thought with, because I'm I'm also, I'm so a good person, and but people are going to keep abusing me because I'm a good person. They're going to keep taking advantage of it. You're still, you're contradicting your thought. You're contradicting that that open process of your thoughts you basically are saying i'm such a great person but i deserve this or if you wake up on a monday morning saying oh it's monday we got to change the way we think because whatever we think is what's going to dictate our day how we think is going to dictate how we go through life i've realized that no matter what, life is going to have negative curveballs. It is. You're going to always run into some kind of negativity. But instead of me thinking, oh, why does this keep happening? Why does this keep happening? Because the fact of being, it's everything happens in life to end up teaching you something. So instead of me asking, why is this happening? I think, what is this here to teach me? What can I learn from this experience? So I'm taking a negative thought and changing it into a positive. And you guess what? It doesn't linger on me as long. Because if we keep sitting here wondering, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? Which is a negative thought process. You're going to constantly drive yourself crazy trying to figure it out. The reason, the why. It's not going to happen. A lot of people don't realize when you change the way your thought process works, the way you think, the way you handle yourself, you change your negative thoughts to positive thoughts, then you just start feeling this weight come off your shoulder because negative thoughts can weigh down on you. Negative thoughts can make you not want to get out of bed. 
Yes, we can't stop the negative thought process, but you know what you can do? You can change how you ask that question in your head. You could change how you think and you paint a different picture. When you look at it at a different angle, you paint a whole different picture. So same with instead of you having a negative thought and you have a positive thought, you're changing how you look at it, the perspective of how you look at the situation. Instead of saying, oh, it's Monday, everything that could possibly go wrong is going to go wrong today. So now already you anticipating all the negative and you don't leave yourself the room to think of any positivity. You could think of today is a new day. I woke up. What can I learn today? Every day is a new learning experience, a new start over. Because when you start the day with that whole negative thought, you're already weighing yourself down. I know that there's been plenty of times in my past that I've wasted opportunities with people that would have been great potential because I put myself in a friend zone because I felt like they were, I was not good enough for them. No, it's not a matter of if you're good enough. It's not a matter of your thought process. Everything has to happen in its own way. And usually when you start thinking you ain't good enough for somebody, what typically ends up happening is you get rejected. It's because you already set yourself up for failure because of those negative thoughts. Everything you do from the time that you breathe, from you inhale, you exhale. Those thoughts that roam in your mind is energy. You are a living, breathing battery, a magnet. So whatever you put out, you want to receive. Whether it's negative thoughts, negative energy. It may not come at the time that you want it to because some things move slower. It's going to come when it needs to come. But here's the deal. When you constantly think negative, that's all you're going to get. And when you finally do get something good, you done thought negative all your entire life. And when something good comes in, you think that it's deceitful, it's hurtful, it's going to hurt you. And that's the biggest problem. The reason why I say that, you know, thoughts are energy and the things that we get in our lives is important to change how we look at it in the perspective is because a lot of people who have mental health issues, we are so used to negative things, especially with me with having PTSD. Coming from a traumatic background for the longest, anytime something good happened to me, I sat here and questioned it. I'm like, there's no way I deserve to have this good because I still had those negative thoughts weighing me down. So when good things happen to me, I just like, they're not doing it because they want to do it for me. They're doing it because they pity me. They're doing it because they feel sorry for me. They're doing it because they feel like I can't handle my own. They're doing it because they know my background and all they want to do is take care of me and I don't want to be back in that situation. So it took me years to get out of that mindset because it was just making me miserable. So those negative thoughts were giving me negative feelings and with the negative feelings, it wasn't helping me heal. A lot of people don't wake up and realize that they have their health, that they can be able to smile, that they will open their eyes another day. It is a little, it just takes very minimum energy to change your thought process and the way you think. It's easy to be negative, but it's harder to be positive. It just takes a little bit more work, takes a little bit more effort to change that energy and that thought process inside your internal being because you are your own factory. So it only takes you to work on you. Nobody else can work on you but you. So if you woke up today thinking negative and you want to keep saying, woe is me, why does these things keep happening, this, that, and the other, stop. Because that's going to be the first step you need to take is to change your thought process. In order for things to change in the way you want it to change, you have to start with you. Everything in life starts internally with you. And it starts with your thoughts. When you get motivation and determination, those positive good energies, those good thoughts... 
That starts with who? You. Some people even start on a competition level. Oh man, I'm seeing my brother or my best friend do it. I got it. I can do that too. It can either be admiration or competition. Now, competition is a double-edged sword because competition, it can either be a positive thought or you competing for the wrong reason. The only person you should ever be in competition with is yourself and your past self. Your future self should be in competition with your past self. I got to be better than that, that old me. So whatever, whatever motivates you, let that be push you through your day, no matter what is thrown at you. Like yesterday for me, I'm going to give you what happened to me yesterday, a rundown. I have one pilot that comes through every so often. And when he comes through, he always waits until the last feasible minute to let us know that there's an issue. Like we fully boarded up, about to get ready to shut doors. Oh no, we need maintenance. Now I'm about to catch a delay. Now, mind you, if you know anybody in the airline industry, the airline industry, they do not get paid until the doors are closed. That is for flight attendants, pilots, this, that, and a third. But they also have a set time that they are allowed to fly. A lot of people get mad at flight attendants. They get mad at pilots. But in all actuality, they're working for free up until the doors are closed. With the people who work downstairs, we don't control what goes on in the aircraft. We're just the middleman. We help you get from point A to point B. That's it. Get you from one side of security to the other side. Make sure you're all good. Make sure you are who you are. So on and so forth. We still got rules. We got to follow by the government. So with the pilot basically saying that, yeah, we're going to need maintenance out because of the type of maintenance that was need to be done or the check that needed to be done because it really wasn't maintenance. It was a check. Um, we had to deplane everybody. Now, with us deplaning everybody, everybody had to sit out for a whole nother hour. Kept changing the thoughts and everything else like that. And now, because of the check, we now had to start the plane a certain way, which was going to take an extra 10 minutes for them to leave. So, what would normally take us 10 minutes to get them pushed back and everything, now it's about 20 minutes. This whole snowball effect changed the whole day. And I can't, I can admit, I'm still working on me. And making sure my energy is back to being positive and being the best little witch that I can. And realizing that the things come in threes. I literally set the tone for my rest of my day when I got mad at this pilot. And I tried to sit down and say, you know what? He doesn't, he's always so pleasant about it. And I tried to change it. But by the time I started changing that thought process... I already end up causing one flight to be delayed and another flight to be delayed. And then now my last flight, the pilot was rude, basically threw paper at me, didn't even say hi when I said hi. Because at this point, now I'm positive by my last flight, which was almost seven hours later. I sat here and was just like, hey, how are you doing? Pilot was just like, yeah, what's the code? Okay. All right. Well, hi. I hope your flight from, you know, your location was good. He was rude. Didn't even say hi back. Didn't smile. Didn't do anything. Just basically walked off my aircraft. Didn't even want to stop and show me his badge. Was just like real rude. Like there's certain protocols we still got to follow where we are and you just being rude. And it's our job. We don't have to deal with each other. We have to still be friends because at the end of the day, we're a big unit and a family in the airline industry because we're going to see half these people. We may not even see the same pilots again, but we may get the same pilots over and over and over again for our routes. So I try to treat everybody with kindness because at the end of the day, I don't know what their day is going through. And I could be that first beacon of positivity they get when they, they've been in the air for, you know, four to five hours and this, that, and the other. So I basically say this is I set the tone for myself when I got mad at that first pilot. And by the time I finally changed my thoughts, I'm like, you know what? He's always been a pleasant guy. I'm getting mad because I caught a delay. You know what? I'd rather than be safe than sorry. Like, I changed everything in my thoughts. But by that time, it was already too late. I've welcomed so much negative energy that by the time that last crew came, everything I could possibly ask for in the worst pilot ever, I got. 
And then I still let my judgment get the best of me and got angry when it was time for them to leave. And then I'm just like, man, this, that, and the third almost catching my, almost made me lose my whole religion and not protect my energy. And I was about to show a person why I, why my family's from Chicago and my, that my dad ain't raised no punk, blah, blah, blah. Like I went off. And then I had to recenter myself and say, you know what? I may never see this pilot ever again. But at that point in time, I ended my day on a negative light. There was nothing I could really do about it. I asked for that. I can't be mad at nobody else but myself because I allowed somebody to take my power from me, to take the little bit of ounce of positive energy from me. The biggest control that you can have in the world, a lot of people don't understand, especially people who have power, who who have a narcissistic complex where they want to control people because they feel like they're all knowing and all powerful. Most times they don't even have control over themselves. A lot of serial killers and stuff. The biggest problem with narcissists is when they do something like that, they don't realize impulse control. They don't know how to take themselves away from the spotlight. They don't know how to get away from certain things. One thing as a person you can only control is yourself, but narcissists, They don't realize that even if they think they control themselves so much that they can control someone else, they fail to realize that's the biggest problem because they don't know how to control themselves. I always tell people, you have to start with you. You can't control other people. You can control how you feel about a situation and how you take the situation. Do not give people your power because when you allow yourself to get upset and allow your thoughts to go into that negative light, you have now transferred your energy to them, whatever ounce of positive energy to them and gave them the power and you just just kept the negative because negativity will stick to you like glue. And it's not like you could just simply wash that off. It's not going to be easy to change that thought process. You got to start with you. Everything you do in life starts with you. And it starts first with that first thought you have when you wake up in the day. That energy, that first thought you have, when you sit here and hear your alarm going off at four, five, six, seven. And you know, press news on there, talking about five more minutes, five more minutes. Nah, you should be like, nah, man. I'm happy I woke up my eyes. I can hear this alarm. I can see. One of the girls that I consider my sister, there was one day she woke up with no sight. She has an autoimmune deficiency that basically has caused her to lose her sight. And there was a moment in time when we were in London, because she went to London for the very first time, where I had to walk her around London the entire time, and she kept apologizing, saying, oh, I feel so bad. I'm, we're in London. You can't keep up with everybody. You got to walk with me and keep me there. And she's also deaf. So I had to stay on the side that she can hear. And I basically had to tell her and paint a picture for her, because she can see, but it was blurry. And that negative thoughts weighed her down. And she was like, I know I'm feeling negative and I feel so bad. She knew she, her ne- her energy affected me as an empath. But you know what? I knew what I signed up for because I still wanted to share those memories with her. And I told her, I was like, at the end of the day, I would, I would never regret taking who I took to London. Because at the end of the day, that was an experience she's never got to have. And I'd rather her be with somebody that was going to be willing to take that sacrifice and be there and enjoy those moments. I didn't look at it as a negative experience. It helped me sit down and get out of my phone a lot so I could sit here and actually enjoy those moments. It just takes nothing to be positive. Well, no, I take that back because like I said, it's, it's a lot easier to be negative than it is to be positive because we are, as human beings, We're so used to only seeing negativity in the world that it just comes naturally. So you have to be bigger and better than that. If social media causes you to think negative, take a detox from social media. If the news makes you feel upset, like I limit myself on the news because no news is good news. As something my dad and my grandmother used to say, no news is good news. So I usually do not look at anything on the news for too long. Like I'll catch up on the news. I'll listen to one article or I'll read one article just to kind of keep up. But most news right now with this pandemic is all negative. 
I just look at it this way. I'm doing everything to keep my hygiene good. My body's going to make sure it protects me. I take care of my temple, so my temple's going to protect me. Everybody making a big fuss out of it. You got to change the way you think. You can't control other people. You could just control you. So, with everything said and done, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys are protecting your energy. I hope your first thought this morning is, I'm happy I woke up. I can see. I've opened my eyes. It's a new day. It's beautiful. Now let me go ahead and get this hygiene right. Protect my energy, my body, my temple. Now, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, protect your